Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Om Gyananti Mirandasya Kyanan Gyana Salakaya Chaksuron Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Juta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaisnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatan Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sivisakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabandho Jagatpate Gopesa Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vindavanispari Visabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Pataru Vyascha Kipasindu Vyayabacha Patitanam Pabane Vyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siyadvaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna So Quite a festival today So many Acharyas Sarasvati Puja as well and Bhashan Panchami we're celebrating on this most auspicious day Panchami Gaurapaksha Madhava Mas 535 Gauravda so we'll try to describe I don't know if we'll be able to do it in 44 minutes, all of them. Uh, we will try. First of all, today's Vasant Panchami. That's why you're seeing yellow colors everywhere, especially Mataji, some of them, they're wearing yellow clothes. This is the favorite color of Mother Sarasvati. Vasant Panchami also means Sarasvati Puja. Vasant Panchami means the beginning. It's not really spring yet. We're all wearing jackets here and chadars. It's the, the day where you will count 40 days. So after 40 days, that will be spring. Technically speaking, well, not here in the northern India. But in some parts of India, if you go like maybe west or east, uh, it's nice and cooling there now. Not really the, this cold. So it culminates, the spring will culminate on uh, Holi. Holi, hey! Yeah, we don't, we don't play uh, colors here. But that is a time of Gaur Purnima as well. 
Um, it's very special also for the farmers. It's like now they're looking forward because of the spring is coming. It's time to plant new crops. And usually the day before also, the um, followers of this Bashan Panchami, they will prepare many foodstuffs and uh, they'll put colors like yellow, yellowish in color, um, like saffron, mm -hmm. and the food that they will eat mostly are yellowish. You must have had that uh, uh, chawal with yellow color, saffron also. In some places in India, it's like a kite festival, the children, they will buy new ropes or treads and they will make kites and they will fly kites today. In uh, tradition also, Basan Panchami means uh, this is a good day to start, especially to those who is uh, having children, young ones, and starting to learn. So they will teach them how to write. Because Sarasvati, she is the goddess of learning, arts, education, knowledge. So university students or schools, they have special puja also to get the favor of Mother Sarasvati. She is also an expansion of Shakti, Shakti Tattva, Shimati Radharani ultimately. Hmm? So this is a special day and we're expecting in the next few weeks also colors will be uh, all over the place in Braj because of this preparation of holy starting today. Today also is Vishnu Priya's, let's see, Vishnu Priya's appearance day. Shimati Vishnu Priya she is the expansion of Bhu Devi. Again, Shakti Tattva. We are not in that category. We're in the Jiva Tattva. That means there is a tendency for us to fall down and to go back home, back to Godhead. Shakti Tattva means they're always in the liberated platform. Vishnu Priya Devi. She is the second wife of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after the demise of Lakshmi Priya who is the first wife of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he decided one day to travel East Bengal what we call now what Bangladesh hmm? for pilgrim um, Due to separation, she died. Uh, it's like, it says that being bitten by the snake of separation. Very young, still very young. So, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back from his travels from East Bengal, Mother Sachi asked him to get married again get married again and mother Sachi she was eyeing a very qualified girl for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu she was thinking that this is the best most qualified daughter of Sanatan Pandit Sanatan Pandit and Sanatan Pandit also, yes, when Mother Sachi, she sent a messenger to Kasinath. Kasinath. She sent Kasinath to uh, make some kind of agreement, a proposal, a request, if it is quite all right for his daughter, 
Vishnupriya to be married to Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And he, Gauranga Mahaprabhu, he was already like very popular, very famous due to his erudite scholarship, learned person, he's a pundit. Uh, he's a nice, very wonderful Brahmin. And also his beauty, as we've heard the other day, his, his beauty is his greatest weapon. Beauty is out of this world. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just by his glance and by just having his darshan, your heart will melt, so to speak. Your heart will melt. So, yes, he asked a Brahmana, an astrologer, Sanatan, Pandit, the father. He says that he is also an expansion of Satrajit, King Satrajit. So, everything is arranged, the timings, the date. Um, Budimanta is a very, very wealthy personality. He bear all the expenses for all of these uh, preparations for the wedding. But uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was told that uh, everything was arranged, he says, really? Who is, who is the groom? Who is the bride? As if he doesn't know what's going on. So now the message returned back to Sanatan. Uh, is he, what? He is not accepting to be married to my daughter. He was devastated. He was devastated. Oops. He, he thought like that. Devastated in such a way that everything crumbled. Seems to be like, okay, that's it. My hope, my wish will not come true. But then later on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, I'm only joking. I was just joking. Actually, I'm ready to, to marry your daughter. So they're, they're very young. In India, they have this tradition, a custom that the young age, the girl uh, will be married to a boy, even like six years old, four years old. Uh, in their mind, they knew that that will be my husband, that will be my wife. But they don't have, you know, like contact. But the boy will go visit the girl's family. And in this way, the bond between the girl and the boy will be so fixed, established, so fixed, that practically there is no divorce. This is the tradition. This is the way how it is. Vedic culture. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Everyone was so happy, he was so joyful, he was so pumped. Everyone, uh, the Brahmins will get their gifts and some of, says, some of the greedy Brahmins will have, will take twice the gifts or some of them even three times. Because they're, they're so like to, not everyone is like Paka Brahmana, some of them have that desire also to accumulate. So everything was so nice. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was wearing this very nice silken cloth. Yellow was also. Uh, nice day, Panchami, yellow color. Decorated with very precious ornaments and jewels. Shimati Vishnu Priya, she looks like the goddess of fortune. Everyone was so happy, especially Mother Sachi. Because it was the request of Mother Sachi to have Nimai or Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be married. 
But then one day, a news was heard by Mother Sachi that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will take sannyas. It's like news was spreading everywhere. And Mother Sachi was like, again, she was heartbroken. Oh no, I will be left alone. The wife, Vishnu Priya, is still young. What's going to happen to us? It, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, my son will take sannyas. What's going to happen? It's better to die. There's no reason to live. This is how great the love of Mother Sachi towards her son, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came on that day, um, Mother Sachi asked him, Is it true? Is it true? Indirectly, he did not reply immediately, but then he revealed that yes. And Vishnu Priya also, it was a long story if you want to read that, Chaitanya Mangal by Lochanda Stakor. Very beautiful, very touchy. Your, your heart will really get uh, so much affected by the conversation between Mother Sachi and Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Now it's Vishnu Priya now. That night, Vishnu Priya asked, Is it true, my dear Lord, you are going to leave us? You're going to take sannyas? And that was part of the, the one that I read this morning. Remember that? Gauranga smiled sweetly and said, Oh, listen, oh, most dear one. He, he's trying to reason now for the action that he would proceed. Please listen very carefully because I'm speaking for your benefit. Everything you see in this creation is temporary and always changing. God and the Vaisnavas are the only everlasting truths. Besides these two, everything else is temporary and illusory. I did not read the other parts because we have so many guests this morning. I think, hey, this is too much. So the next part. Sons, husbands, mother, father, Man and woman are all false, temporary designations. Ultimately, who belongs to whom? Except the lotus feet of Krishna. No one else can be called our near and dear one. Whatever you see in this world is the Lord's impermanent external energy. Krishna is the soul of all living entities, be they men or women. Due to Maya's conditioning, they appear as two. Krishna is the Purusha, supreme enjoyer. Krishna is the actual husband of everyone. Everything else is Prakriti, Krishna's enjoyable energy. Nobody understands this. So it's go on, on and on and on that to pacify Vishnu Priya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked her to sit on his lap and he put one of his hands on her head, touching her and tried to console her. Without giving any indication also that the next morning he will live, he will go. And without knowing, uh, usually this is the proper way to do it. <laughs> like Dhritarashtra, right? Left home. He was told by Vidura, uh, you're, 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 you're wasting your time here. Let me just go. So he did not tell also the family members. 
as he's going to live. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the next day while Vishnu Priya was sound asleep. The next day she was like again all heartbroken, devastated. And she was so austere that whenever she would chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, every time she chants one Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, she would take one grain to put aside. And whatever grains accumulated after chanting the holy name, that is what she's going to eat. Can we follow that? Uh, it's very difficult, isn't it? You have to chant so many rounds. Mm. So many Hare Krishna Maha mantras during the whole day before you can eat your meal. We're so lucky here. We have so nice meals every day, so much sweets every day. I was telling uh, Gaur Bhagavan Prabhu, you know, you should cut the sugar because otherwise you will get sick. Especially our brahmacharis, they have sweets every day practically. But in any case, yeah, we have to be, uh, we cannot imitate them. Just like Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Pundarik Vidyanidhi is the expansion of Bishop Hanu Maharaj, the father of Shimati Radhika. Now, if you look externally, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, he looks like a very materialistic personality. He's surrounded by servants. He will have a hookah, water pipe, smoking. Hmm. He said, water pipe means for smoking, right? His, his uh, lips are always red with uh, betel nuts, chewing betel nuts. He's wearing silken clothes. His hair was nicely perfumed and, and uh, nicely combed. The canopy of his room is like nicely decorated. It's like, you know, it's a luxury, extravagant. How, how can you say, oh, even Gadadhar, who is an expansion of Simati Radharani, because whenever there is a new, well, there is Vaishnava coming in Navadvi area, Mukunda will know. Mukunda and Gadadhar, they're, they're good friends. So Mukunda heard that Pundarik Vijanidi just came, just arrived. So he asked, his friend, Gadadhar, please come. I want to show you a very exalted Vaishnava. Actually, he's not just an exalted Vaishnava. He's a Paramahamsa. A Paramahamsa means topmost swan-like personality. Never, ever be covered up by the modes of material nature. It's beyond Paramahamsa, like Srila Prabhupada. Paramahamsa. Like in sannyas, there are four different stages. Bahuda, Kutichak, Paribrajakacharya, and then Paramahamsa. Paramahamsa means beyond. Beyond the reach. You cannot understand. It's like, who? Oh, just like, uh, not Jagannath Das Babaji. Is Jagannath Das Babaji? Yes, Jagannath Das Babaji. He's a Paramahamsa. He doesn't wear anything, only kopen. And he would chastise his, uh, his uh, deities. Sometimes he would say, Now today you will not eat. Tomorrow, if I can get some, then I will give you a feast. But today, no, 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 you're naughty today. He will tell that to uh, his deities. Hmm? Very, very exalted personalities. Uh, their eyes, oh, you can see the, the love. But still, you may see hey, his hair is disheveled and uh, never takes bath and never sleep. His, his uh, 
but he do, they don't they don't smell anything they smell fragrant and never goes to the latrine uh, these are paramahamsas so we cannot judge an external things here that when Mukunda he recited the verse let me see if I can find this verse from the third canto mm. Hare Krishna yeah from the third canto chapter 2 text 23 aho bakiyam stana kalakutam jigham sayapayavayayad api asadvi lebhe gatim dhatri uchitam tatonyam kambha dayalum saranam brajema so this is Uddhava speaking to Vidura saying whom should I worship except Krishna his magnanimity is so great that when one lady Putana came to kill him by poison she was given the position as mother to him in his domain amongst those who are worshipable he is the most magnanimous personality whom shall I have as my worshipable Lord greater than this after hearing this Pundarik Vijanidhi started to act very strange. He ripped his clothes, his hookah is like he just threw it away, very expensive. Oh, all the canopies are all like disheveled, his hair like, you know, like scattered all over. And he was crying. He was crying. After hearing this, and he was uttering, Come, ba, dayalum, saranam, brajema, aho, bakiyam. Gadadhar Pandit in the beginning was like, you know, he's not able to understand. That in his mind, he was thinking, what is this? In the beginning, I saw him like very big, big materialist, and now he's crying in ecstasy after hearing this verse about Putana. So he asked Mukunda, How can I counteract this offense? I think I should take shelter of him. So Gadadhar became disciple of Bijanid, uh, Pundarik Bijanid. He asked, I want to take shelter of you. It just makes sense, right? Radharani, Vishabhanu, daughter, father. So we should be very, very careful. Uh, we cannot, see, all of us, our aim is towards getting closer and closer to Krishna but the means how we act our engagements may be different but if our aim is the same it doesn't matter how we approach Lord Krishna hmm? an example is given just like we are all patients we are all have the same disease but the doctor will prescribe each and every one of us a different diet some of you may have problem with your liver or you know you're not able to eat a big amount but we all have the same cause to cure our disease so similarly one may be looking like Hey, look at him. He looks like, you know, um, his clothes or his sari. He's like, you know, he's different than others. Externally, he may be looking different, but if our aim is genuine, 
if our aim is on the same direction, it doesn't matter how you'll be able to reach there, the way you want it to reach there. So that is more important. So in Pudrik Bijaniti, we, we learned this lesson that external, we cannot judge. We can judge how much closer he is to Krishna. But the way we approach Krishna, it's only between Krishna and ourselves, individually. Does it make sense? Eh? Because yours is different. You're, well, you have a different diet, I have a different diet. But we all have to eat to survive. So when we approach the Supreme Lord, it's the same thing. Now, Raghunath Das Goswami is another extreme personality when it comes to his bhajan. He is the Prayojana Acharya. If it has nothing to do with Radharani, forget it. He says that even if Krishna is not, uh, even if Krishna is not there, I don't care. As long as Radharani is there, then I care. But you cannot separate Krishna and Radharani anyway. Wherever there is Krishna, Radharani is there. Mm. He would chant one lakh names of the Lord, do his manasa puja. He always uh, carry with him also um, after some time. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him this Govardhan Shila to worship. You can also have darshan of that Shila in Brada Gokulananda temple. But I've, I've read that somehow there is also uh, this Govardhan Shila somewhere here in the Parikrama Marg here, nearby us. But we always go. Is that true? Yeah? Just like there are two tongues in Govardhan Hill, you know, one when you go near near Radakun, Shamakun, then there's another one near Aniyor or something like that. Isn't it? In any case, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so pleased with Raghunath Das Goswami, he gave his personal Govardhan Shila, whom he worshipped this Shila for three years, and the Gunjamala representing. Simati Radharani. Um, he would offer thousand times to deities, to the deities of the Lord. And two thousand times he offered obeisances to the Vaishnavas. Now how often do we offer obeisances to the Vaishnavas? It should be as soon as you wake up, our brahmachari should offer obeisances to each other. Is that being done? Is that practice still on? Or anyone, Griasas, anyone you meet around, you offer obeisances. You're not the loser. <clears throat> How many of you offer obeisances to our president? Huh? Hare Krishna Prabhu, how are you today? Fine, Hare Krishna. No. If you offer obeisances to the super soul, he says that before you offer obeisances to those who are very advanced devotees, they already offered obeisances to you before. Before you do. This is how advanced they are. Hmm? So he would offer obeisances. He would do also parikrama and he would do chant. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, even in the scorching heat of the sun, the Simati Radharani will put her part of the sari to cover Raghunath Das Goswami. Or he would chant and he was oblivious to the surroundings that Lord Krishna will be uh, guarding. Because in those days, a lot of wild tigers. That painting is there. You've seen that painting in Radhakund? Hmm? The Tin Goswami also, the Kaviraj Goswami, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, Raghunath Bhatt Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, the Samadhi there. But there is a special area near 
Shamakund, where also is Bhajan Kutir. And that's why Sanatan Goswami says, don't take the service of the Lord. We should be serving them, not, not taking service to them, from them. That, that was the start. Now you should build a hut. Raghunath Das Goswami, when he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was around 15 years old. Of all the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, he was the first Goswami to met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right from the very beginning, when he heard, especially from Haridash Thakur, through the, his teacher, Balaram Acharya, he got connected with Haridash Thakur. Then from Haridash Thakur, he heard about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He just wanted to go and meet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Shantipur, in Advaita Acharya Prabhu's residence. Hmm? But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, you, you, you go home. Don't get overexcited. You go home, and when the right time comes, you can come and join me. Act in such a way uh, that you're normal. But Raghunath, it was like crying within his heart. He says, how can I do this? How can I do this? That his parents would always wanted to be sure that he's not able to escape that the parents they hired 10 guards now his parents Govardhan Majumdar is in those days is a multi-millionaire somehow or other they got a contract with the ruler the king to take care of certain area, Shaptagram, and for giving uh, a lease, they will take care of everything, the tax and everything, uh, 20, no, 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 for 12 lakhs rupees, but they will earn 20 lakhs rupees, so the 8 lakhs rupees will be remain, and 1 lakh in those days is like, you're a billionaire practically lots of money so the parents decided also to have Raghunath Das Goswami to be married and the girl was like a celestial lady exquisite in beauty but still he wanted always wanted to go to go and escape go and see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that one day Mm. His teacher, Yadunanacharya, came. He says, I, I need a Brahmin to take care of my deities because uh, I'm going for a few days. Can you find one for me? So, that was the time Raghunath Das Goswami was thinking, this is the time I'll be able to escape. And, uh, his teacher, his guru says, Can you find one for me? Okay, I will find one for you, but uh, you will take me with you. So when they both left or walking away from the ashram, actually he, um, he always wanted to run away that he made his ashram outside of the main house. So it, was e it will be easier for him. And then when they were walking away, the guards did not check because he's with the guru. And then when they're a little bit far away from the house, Raghunath Das Goswami says, Guruji, you can go. You can go ahead. No problem. I'll find one. I'll take care of it. So he found one. And he ran away, but in a different direction towards the opposite of Puri. 
because he knew that his parents will sir, uh, send some search and rescue towards Puri. So he went opposite and for some days he was walking. Uh, and then the next time that he thought, okay, they're ready so far, then I will go towards Puri because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Puri. So he met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri. He was in Puri with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for like so many years. Sarvasakshi, how many years? 16 years? Something like that. 14 years, 16 years. Bhagavat Purana was asking the other day, uh, who spent the most time with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Then he heard that it was Gopal Bhatt Goswami. But actually, it was Raghunath Das Goswami. Of course, Raghunath Bhatt Goswami, he met Lord Chaitanya when he was still a young boy, South India. So, yeah, he's very austere. He says that his austerity is like so great, it's like etched under stone. He would only sleep very little, not even an hour. And sometimes he will even forget to sleep or even forget to eat. It was always uh, like his eyes are always like looking very, very moistened by tears. And then when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left his body, he even like 100 grams of butter and a leaf cup. 100 grams. Are we be able to survive like that? No, some brahmacharis, they like to drink half a liter of milk or one liter of milk every day. It's a bit, very, very austere. And it's not false austerity. It's genuine austerity because they're so absorbed in Krishna consciousness that they forget the bodily needs. They forget bodily needs. They don't, they don't, they don't know. Like Pundarik Bijanidhi. So this is Raghunath Das Goswami. He's, he's very amazing. Um, let me read something for you. That Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, instruction to him. Don't indulge in worldly talk. Don't hear worldly talk. Try your best to avoid mundane matters. Don't eat delicious food, but take whatever ordinary food may come of its own accord. And don't dress luxuriously. Always try to take the name of Krishna with the attitude of giving respect to others without expecting respect from anyone. Be humble and never aspire for respectful dealings from others. Hmm. In this way, try to take the name of Krishna constantly. And within, try to serve Shishi Radha Krishna in Vrindavan. Mentally be in Vrindavan, rendering service to Shishi Radha Krishna Leela. He gave the charge from his secretary Sarup Damodar to Raguna Das Goswami. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of humility, says he's more qualified than me to take care of you. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that his background, Raghunath Das Goswami, coming from a very wealthy family. He even sent some, some servants to Raghunath Das Goswami and um, even bought a house in Jagannath Puri. 
because the parents cannot do anything. They were saying that if our wealth, which is like, like that of wealth of Kubera, if the wife is so beautiful, it compares to the goddesses of fortune. We cannot stop him from going to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And who are we? We cannot do it. So they will send allowance, money. And Raghunath Das Goswami will also invite Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for Pasadam. But then later on he says, no, no, this is not good. I am being proud. I am being proud to invite the Lord to eat on my place. So he gave that up also. And then he started to eat whatever prasad has been thrown from the Jagannath Mandir that even the cows will not dare to eat. He would pick, you know, the rice, dried rice, and then he will, he will, he will uh, polish them, he will clean them, and this is what he will eat. Such an extreme personality. He is Rati Manjari in Radha Krishna Leela, or some say it's Rasa Manjari. Hmm. Raghunandan Das Thakur, his father is Mukunda, he's the king's physician, the, the doctor of the king, Mukunda. That means he's holding a very, very important position. Uh, that one day he says, uh, they, they have a Gopinath deity. And the Gopinath deity has been worshipped by his father Mukunda. So I have to go for some errands for a few days. I want you to continue the puja. You offer food and be sure that the Lord will eat. So father left. And then Raghunandan do the offering. It is not known who is his mother. Because if, if the mother is there, then the mother could have done the uh, puja. In any case, uh, now it's time for the offering. And then Raghunandan says, well, my father says you should eat. So now eat, eat. Because if you don't eat, I'll be scolded. And Gopinath, he consumed everything. He ate everything. So now the father returned. He says, oh, so did you do the puja? Yes, dear father, very nicely. I... Now where, where, where is the prasadam? Raghunanda says, oh, I'm sorry. There's nothing left. What do you mean? Gopinath ate everything? Gopinath ate everything. Well, you asked me to feed him, so he ate everything. Now, in the mind of Mukunda, he was thinking, I don't think he will lie. He's just a simple boy. So he decided one day to test whether he's really telling the truth or not. And he told Raghunandan, my dear, Son, I'm going again for an errand. So you please take care, okay? Be sure the deities Gopinath eats. So he left the house, but immediately he returned. He was looking in a small hole, trying to figure out what's gonna happen. No. Again, the same thing, Ra uh, Raghunanda says, eat, eat. My father is away, so you have to eat. And then he saw, Mukunda saw that Gopinath took a ladu and ate half of the ladu. And then Raghunandan saw Mukunda was hiding, and then Mukunda came out, and then Gopinath stopped. <laughs> he stopped eating the ladu. So if you go to Srikant, you have been there? Sarvasakshi, bro? You have been to many places. 
We should go one day and see a very small, a very small deity that still half of the ladu is still there. Now this is not made up. This is not like, you know, like this is how it is. Now Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Mukunda, who is the father or who is the son? Are you the father or he is your son? Or is he the father or are you the son? Mukunda says, he is the father, I am the son. I'm just following in his footsteps. The love that he has for the Supreme Lord is unfathomable. So we should be like this also. Some may just come er, before us or after us, let's say, but the devotion of that devotee or the newcomer is much greater than us, the way we see them, the way how humble they are, the way how obedient they are, the way how submissive they are, we should learn from them. Even they just came recently. Hmm? We should try to imbibe any good qualities that we can see from each and every one and try to follow in their footsteps. Now, Vispana Chakravarti Thakur. Is this the last one? Huh? Vispana Chakravarti Thakur is very, very great devotee of the Supreme Lord. Especially his tika or his explanation, the purport. Uh, Sarat Darshana? What's the name? Yes, he, he, he made so many commentaries, Srimad Bhagavatam, after reading Jiva Goswami's commentary, Siddhar Goswami's, or Siddhar Swami's commentary, Sanatan Goswami's commentary, he became inspired. This is his greatest, actually, because Srimad Bhagavatam is the topmost Purana. Amala Purana. So he was inspired to, to also glorify Srimad Bhagavatam. That most of the quotations that we, will, that we read from Srila Prabhupada's books is from Vishpana Chakravarti Thakur. Hmm? Was he the one who wrote the uh, Guru Vastakam? Yeah, he says that anyone who chants the Guru Vastakam every day without fail, they'll go back home, back to Godhead. So fortunate we are. We have two Mangal Artics, one Prabhupada Samadhi, and one over here. Yeah, Vismarana Chakrabarti Thakur says, I would like to also write and glorify Srimad Bhagavatam for two reasons. Out of my foolishness and out of by the mercy of the Supreme Lord Himself. You know, out of my foolishness. I know I will try and I could be like a laughing stock. I can be a laughing stock of everyone, but at least I will try. And also, yes, by the mercy of the Supreme Lord, I will write. This is the nature of the devotee. They're always humble. They don't take any credits for themselves. Like Srila Prabhupada, whenever he's been praised or glorified, he will always say, oh, this is only due to the mercy of my Guru Maharaj. And sometimes he will say, Oh, this is also to the mercy of my disciples that I'm able to do my service for my Guru Maharaj. And one time he will, he will say also, Oh, you, you are all my Guru. You young boys and girls. 
Mm. So Bhishmana Chakrabarti Thakur, he wrote many, many books, many, many books. It is said that he is an expansion of Srila Rupa Goswami. Hmm? Rupa Goswami is like the god of poet. Hmm. He's, and, and he's an expansion. There is like mm, practically no difference between Rupa Goswami and Vishwana Chakrabarti Thakur. What is actually amazing with Bhishmana Chakrivarti Thakur, he, he, he studied the Srimad Bhagavatam that he knows how to connect from one. It's like in, in, now we're in the 10th canto. Most of this um, purpose that we're reading is from Bhishmana Chakrivarti Thakur. They're given the vision how to see and we go deeper and deeper that for an ordinary devotee will not be able to penetrate will not be able to see so their eyes are like it goes so deep that they will write and even an understandable easy to understand just like Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada would write seemingly very simple but very deep so the acharyas are like this. They, they will give their commentaries for the understanding of common men. And without them, we'll not be able to, to see and to understand what's going on. There'll be like a curtain that will not be able to see what's on the other side. He was saying that to really understand, because he explains also the um, the sequence from faith to prema that before we get the faith because we all need faith in attaining love of God you need two things you need a slight mercy from the pure devotee of the Lord and also a little bit of ways how you serve them then faith will start and then when you reach prema you attain love of God, you'll see a darshan of the Supreme Lord and you'll be able to relish the relationship between the Supreme Lord and ourselves. It's amazing how he connects. Sometimes in his, in his tikka, he will have, he will quote uh, from previous chapters and also he would quote few chapters ahead. Uh, how, how do they do this? It's like Jiva Goswami, how, how he can write lots and lots of verses. They're empowered. They're not of this world. They're, we cannot compare with them. But we can just try to understand and follow in their footsteps and also uh, be humble like they are. Be humble like they are. Usually this is the uh, foremost quality of, of a pure devotee of the Supreme Lord. So yes, Bispana Chakrabarti Thakur, um, in our disciplic succession there is a Diksha line and Siksha line. And he was saying that Siksha line is more important, more prominent. Because what we should gather actually is the essence of the teachings. But there is also Diksha line and Siksha line. But out of the two, Siksha line is better. Hare Krishna, I'll stop here. There are many more things, so many pastimes. Raghunath Das Goswami, Panihati festival. Uh, he's being caught by the government people. There's so many. There's another pastime of Raghunandan Thakur I did not mention. So, are there any questions or comments? You're not wearing yellow today? Our new bhaktas, they wear yellow every day. <laughs> any points? Krishna Kumar Prabhu, you'd like to give the microphone? 
Eh, 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 eh. Ha? Ha? Um, let me see. Yeah, he says, usually these associates are. Anyone can. I've read it, but it just slipped. Um, no, I'm not able to get it now. This is usually in the uh, Gora Ganodesh Deepika. I'm sorry, not now. Abine, Batme. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir. Turn it on. Don't turn it on. Just keep it on the whole time. Huh? Hare Krishna. Speak. Speak. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, my question is, is, like you said in your that last of your lecture, that if uh, Shiksha is more prominent than the Hippocrates. So, uh, is uh, uh, educating himself and with his mind, uh, takes somebody as his spiritual master, mm -hmm. but anybody to take Diksha from him. Uh, maybe some of it could be many reasons. So, can he, can he be an uh, uh, authentic disciple of uh, that spiritual master? Usually the Siksha Guru becomes the Diksha Guru. If we say, if that is the philosophy, then uh, okay, my Siksha Guru is Rupa Goswami. I don't need the uh, initiation. I don't need Diksha from Prabhupada's disciples or the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. They would say, I don't need Prabhupada's uh, Diksha. Uh, he, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is my Siksha Guru. No, it doesn't work like that. You need a Diksha Guru first. Okay? All of these, all of these great, great personalities, they have Diksha Guru. Even Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has a Diksha Guru. Lord Krishna has a Diksha Guru. To set an example. Okay? Yeah. Because of it, it is not like in Diksha. Intentionally, he is not taking diksha, but because of some unknown reasons and unfavorable situation, by the end of his life, he was just uh, couldn't catch up on the diksha guru. You still need a diksha to connect to Krishna. There's no way; otherwise, it's not going to work. Formal initiation is a must. Otherwise, you'll be just like wishy-washy. Oh, I don't like you, I go another one. Oh, I don't like him, I go another one. I don't like, no, no, it's not like that. You have to be connected formally to Krishna at the time of initiation, diksha. Then after that, you can have a million siksha gurus. Okay? Jai. Basan panchami ki!